Hello and welcome to You Think That's Funny, a podcast where I, Mark Geary, am the arbiter for all that is hilarious. You can look at the title You Think That's Funny as either a question or an accusation, depending on the aggressiveness of your nature. Links for this week's show, and we have some good ones, are at youthinkthatsfunnypodcast.com. So if you want to pause and research or follow up at the end, go to youthinkthatsfunnypodcast.com. Up this week, we have, and let me make sure I get this right, New York comedy legend, David Angelo. Say hello, David. Hey, Mark, how you doing? It's great to be here on the show. I appreciate the invitation to come discuss comedy with one of the greats, uh, you know, yourself, you know, your reputation around the country. Uh, it's fantastic to be here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have a great time. I already know it. Uh, so my disclosure on this week's episode is that uh, I have known David Angelo for poor, close to a decade now. Uh, we're probably the last two people in America that like jokes. We're probably the last two, two surviving members of the of the joke aristocracy, as we should call ourselves, David. Um, it's true. It's true. <laughs> So let's go. This is going to be a this is going to be a corker. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of dissension until right at the end. So for those that thrive on conflict, you may want to slide the, the little bar around to the, about the twenty minute twenty minute mark. I would say is when uh, dissension will creep in. But at the top, we're going to have a lot of uh, fun stuff to agree with here. So David, we're going to go through what David Angelo taste maker finds funny uh then remember there's an army of kids out there with biros and notepads hanging on your words at this point so you know keep it clean for the millennials i don't want to you're the ninth interview i don't want to get cancelled after nine no that's true i mean thank god ratings don't matter anymore you know that's the important part here that we <laughs> for, can, for this show as, it's it's as a, long as we have one as long as there's one person listening we can keep going <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I always think it's like someone who's accidentally clipped like there's a 70 year old man out there who just accidentally clicks on the wrong thing in iTunes it was meant to be like Gardner's question time and he got right. he gets us so and it's important you know right up the top you tell him to slide the playhead to 20 minutes in yeah that was a nice tip Mark you know just <laughs> If anyone's still listening, you know, this, this, we're in the part that doesn't matter. You should have fast forwarded yeah. to, yeah. You, I'll, I'll juice it up once we hit 20 minutes, then I'll, then I'll be back on. I'm going to just phone it in at we your should, request, Mark. We should just cut to like some, uh, Philip Glass music or something now. Like that would be a family guy joke. Just 20 minutes of, of lounge music or something now. Right. Did anyway. you call Philip Glass lounge music? Is that what you just did? Everything's lounge music to me that is an oasis. Music died oh, yeah, when the Gallagher boys parted ways. British New Wave. <laughs> Aren't you like, I could see you out there with Pet Shop Boys in the <laughs> mid 80s, you know? Oh boy. Anyway, we, we're digressing. Your, I'm, I'm going to bring your, this in at 30. <laughs> no, you got your Ford Cortina going down to, uh, to Cardiff. <laughs> no one goes to Cardiff, it's in Wales. Look, Enough enough <laughs> with this flim flam. Let's get to the uh, the point here. The first thing that David Angelo comedy tastemaker finds funny. It's a doozy. It's a a poor person wearing a barrel. Like explain it. Oh, uh, one of the funniest things ever is a poor person wearing a barrel. It, I feel like that's like a 1960s like that died out in 1960s New Yorker cartoons, right? That's where yeah, I you know, saw him. It, it it got overused a little. That's what happens in the, in, with uh, when something's gold. You know, there's a whole like rush to it, and then it gets overused, and then it gets you know put aside. But if you're just gonna go on pure concept, yeah, the idea of a person <laughs> who's down on their luck having to then you know with the suspenders, you know what I mean? Like things yeah. are so bad, they're wearing wooden clothing. W which I mean, you can't. You cannot beat that. That's the funniest thing there is. It's, it's, nothing says someone's at rock bottom. Nothing tell it. You, you can't give that information quicker. 
than a human being <laughs> wearing a barrel. I mean, it's perfect. It's just hilarious. There's someone invented that, right? You just want to go up to him and go, where were you when a person walked by wearing a barrel? I don't even know if it ever happened in real life. I think it's just a pure... I mean, because a barrel, they, they weigh like a 200 pounds. No one's walking around, right? Right, right, yeah. But it's so... The idea of that, to be sitting around and be like, how can we convey to our audience that this person <laughs> is poor? And they could say, well, we can have them wearing raggedy tramp yeah. clothes. You know, the top hat with the, <laughs> yeah, with with the, the top the of it hinged. Yeah, 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 yeah. We could do that. Or you know what we could, we could also do is we just put them in a barrel with suspenders. Perfect. <laughs> That's genius. You, you think in the middle, you at least draw the shoes with the toes sticking out the front, right? That's kind of like the, the next stop before you hit barrel. Right. The barrel person never has shoes either. They're always, oh, yeah. it's only the barrel. Nude, it's yeah. only the barrel. I, I like um, the poor person wearing a barrel. I always think of as like cartoonish. And the, the other one was the, uh, they open the wallet and there's moths flying out. That was a good one as well. Did you ever enjoy that one? Yeah, that's a classic. Um, and there's some other cartoony stuff as well. There's, I think we discussed tramp with a bindle and a stick. That never happened. No, that ha that in the old days, Mark, they were doing that. In Dust Bowl era, that's how they were walking around. Yeah. So, so we'll be doing it in about five years' time, then, a yeah. according to the internet. Anyway, start. Yeah, go find a good <laughs> stick while there's still some options. <laughs> People fight. and then what? Uh, the other one I always liked was. Uh, a strong man was always in like a leopard skin leotard, and they had a weight with one ton written on the, you know, they had like the barbell, but it had one ton written on it. Right. Well, you had to know, otherwise who, they look like balloons, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, the, the fine art of uh, political cartooning has sadly gone downhill. It's all about communicating to the audience. The best thing about the old days, strong men, is like they, those guys were like completely weak. If you brought like the strongest <laughs> yeah. man in the world yeah. from 1910, <laughs> Yeah. It'd just be I like mean, dunk probably, from down the gym. <laughs> yeah, he would just get totally <laughs> obliterated by like an average high schooler. Yeah, I, I always think that as as well when you look at like old Hollywood stuff, and you can tell it was misogynistic then because like the women all like sort of hourglass shape, and the dudes are just paunchy and like balding, and you're like that couldn't have been the best looking guy that Hollywood found in 1950. No way. Well, it was because in those, it's like Fred Astaire, right? You know, just like kind of like balding guy. But he could do the tap dancing. That's how they got in. It's like W.C. Fields. He could juggle. They all had to have a vaudeville act. And by the time they got to Hollywood, they were in their mid-50s. <laughs> but they were the hot stuff on the stage, you know. That's how the system worked. Huh. The old days. Huh. I don't know. I, I just look at it and I think either women had a very different idea of attractiveness or dudes really were just like, we, who cares who's up there? Put my uncle well, Ted up there. Well, everybody had, Mark, everybody <laughs> had a different, look at Mae West. Yeah. Go watch Mae West. She's sex symbol by today's standard. Yeah, but you know what? The interesting thing about Mae West was she was about like 68 when she was the sex symbol. Like look up yeah. her, look up her age. It was like no, this this woman's an old woman, but I don't know. The attitude scored it, I guess. Yeah, it was all weird back then. <laughs> it was all weird back then. The, the Nobody was times. hot until nineteen fifties. Yeah. Not until Brando and uh, what's her name, the French woman there. What's her name? No, you're not thinking of the Italian one, Sophia Loren, right? No, I'm thinking Bardot. Bardot. Oh, Bardot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They so were the that, first two hot people on Earth. Yeah, so I was going to say, it's official. Everyone was ugly until 1955, and then, I don't know, skincare regimes happened or something. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, let's get to number two. Let's get to number two. We've got to get, you know, we can dawdle to the 20-minute mark, as you said. Um, so uh, when people say, uh, have you tried decaf, are you talking about that specific sentence or are you talking about just a like a like a general millennial 
the... No, that sentence. That sentence. That specific sentence. When somebody says, um, have you tried decaf? Why are that they... is always funny. Why are they saying it? It's like if you're being rowdy or you're, you're speaking fast or something. It could be anything. It's a way to shut someone down. <laughs> it's like a... you, Mark, if, if you got excited about something, I'd be like, Mark, have you tried decaf? It's hilarious. Okay. This is obviously that East Coast erudition shining through that 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 a simple Midwesterners I thought you would I thought you were sort of talking about like millennial, you know, malaise here. So that specific sentence. Yes. All right. So in, in two years when we're allowed to be in a room with people again, I'm gonna try that, dude. And I'm report we're gonna have you back on this podcast if I haven't, yeah. you know, given up. It's gonna be hilarious. Someone will be all excited about something. You'll come over and be like, Whoa, have you tried decaf? Everyone will laugh. <laughs> all right. It's okay. a guarantee. Write that one down. Uh, I know, let's do this. Let's get a YouTube channel going where people film themselves saying, Have you tried decaf? No, right. it's situational, Mark. It's situ you have to okay. say it to somebody. No, no, but you can film yourself saying it to someone. You know what I mean? And we'll mm. we'll we'll do a jump. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to act like someone who is under forty here. You know, I'm spitting ideas as they say. Um, okay, so this one now the next one I've got uh, I've got a follow up for you. I've got you bang to rights on the next one. So calling things by brand names. Slow down. You're gonna blow one of the Yokohamas. Is what you would say in a speedboat, presumably, right? So, what? Give me the reason why it's funny to to use brand names. Well, using brand names is funny because it's very specific, right? Yeah. And then it's also it shows that the person speaking is also like very status conscious. Ah, so you're saying it's funny. Not only is it funny to say it, but it's funny because you've kind of caught them out, right? Like, oh, I see you trying to yeah, it, trying to humble brag your way into the to the convo. Yeah, it's a braggy thing, but also the words are almost always funnier than whatever the noun is. <laughs> like Yokohamas is funny. Yokohamas is a tire brand, okay? Oh, it's tire. I was thinking it was engines on a speedboat. No, no, no. Yokohamas is a tire. So if I'm driving my car around, I'm like, oh, I was really putting some heat on the Yokohamas. I mean, ju just that word is funny, right? <laughs> yeah. But then also me referring to my tires by as Yokohamas. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm... What an insane thing. <laughs> what would be another good one then? Give me another example. You, you're winning me over on oh, it. Oh, let right? me, Mark. You know, you want anything to drink? I'm going to go dra grab a few beers from the Kenmore. Oh, right. Okay. Hang on. Kenmore's you know? are like a vacuum cleaner, isn't it? No, it's a. It's like, isn't that the Sears brand for every piece of uh, hardware? Oh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't. That's my fridge. I don't consume, David. You know that. Or the the Whirlpool. I don't know. Whirlpool. Makes fridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because. Because we've had this conversation offline, you're not sold on Alan Partridge, which I I, I am. I mean, I am, but he's very British, and but I'm not British. There's a piece in Partridge where he says, "Oh, it's like people who say tannoy when they mean pa," and and you know he, he Wait, Partridge. What do they say? Uh, in an Alan Partridge episode, he says it's like people who say tannoy when they mean pa system. What's the first word you're saying? Tannoy. T -A Tanmoy? T-A-N-N-O-Y. Tannoy. Oh, Tannoy. Is that a British brand? It must be, yeah. I, I thought it was universal. Yeah, it's like a... We um, don't have Tannoy. You, uh, you know, like those big speaker horns that they used to have in, like, stadiums? You know, like a retro-looking speakery thing. No. Okay. Oh man, yeah. we are. I tell you what, dude, we got to get to this twenty-minute mark as fast as possible. So, uh, <laughs> so Alan Partridge says he means town. So, totally lost. All right, <laughs> let's let's abandon that one. 
Uh, and, Mark, and, it's, it's just an extension of every... Like, if you were talking about a car in a yeah, comedy yeah. bit, you would say Hyundai Sonata is yes, funnier I would. than a car. Yes. So if you just do that, if you apply that to literally everything, it's always still going to work. Okay. Excellent. All right. <laughs> you know, That's if I'm working on a computer, I'm be like, yo, let me hold on. Hold on a sec. The Toshiba's freezing up. I mean, it's like better than if I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, what is it authors, do authors call that? Like adding color, is it? There's like an author thing for it where you're like, I don't know. Bring it into reality. I don't reality. read, Mark. My, I don't know how to read. <laughs> All right, so here's the big one. This this is where we get bogged down. Being a loser is funny. Oh yeah, always hilarious. So, so <laughs> I mean, just I, I don't even know where to crack this crack this nut open. Like sporting events, or you just in general like no tragedy, in, ge- in everything. Tragedy is funny. I don't know all this stuff, but like you need to be. If you're making a comedy, yeah. the person has to be a loser. Oh. They okay. can't be they cannot you can't be cool and funny. Right? You can't. Yeah. It has to be like I mean the most simple thing is like Charlie Chaplin is this tramp, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then everybody else through the history of comedy movies, they're all not i mean in most good comedy movies they're they're bad they're idiots they're stupid they're poor yeah they're losers things aren't going their way yeah and that's that's the only way you can be funny with it you have to be a loser to be funny otherwise nobody is interested yeah yeah no one's rooting for you right the human angle Nobody's rooting for you. Cause I, that's I, why you can't be cool. But I, I have, I have a slightly different twist on that, and it's come up before. Like I believe to be truly hilarious, a, of a character at least, someone has to be unlikable. Like all of the characters that are burned into my head, are real just unlikable people. Um. I can't laugh at someone who I might empathize with or or want to see win. So maybe we're not agreeing on that. We, if we yeah, we no, hit the, they, we hit the 20 we hit the 20 point, 20 minute mark David so we, but we Mark, can you go know, now. you know <laughs> like look at did you ever see Saxondale? Yeah. Great. Obviously. That guy's you don't hate that guy. He's a loser, yeah. but you think he's funny. But you like him. Yeah. And never any point are you like, this guy's awful. You're like, I like this guy. He's just a completely like deranged, washed up loser. That's what's yeah. so cool about him. Yeah. Okay. You know, yep, yep, yep. I'm going to agree. So yeah. No, okay. So maybe I, I need to change what I've been telling people. My truly memorable, the best characters are really unlikable, but the baseline is loser. I think we agree on that. It's got to yeah, be a tragedy. Yeah, the baseline is loser. And if you don't know, if you're listening, Saxondale's this show with, what's the guy's name, Mark, his real it's, name? It's Coogan, but I'll, I'll link to it. Steve Coogan. Very funny. It's about an ex-roadie who works as an exterminator. It's one season, I think. Maybe it's two seasons. Very funny. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. It's a great one. Uh, I like how, well, I know why you like it. It's because every episode he has to admit that he never rode for Zeppelin. Is the best. Like yeah, every so funny. every episode, he has to be like, "No, I didn't write it, it, everyone else, but Zeppelin." Right. Awesome. Yeah, it's so great. All right. Um. So, oh, here's 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 where we're we're, we're all right. So we're almost at the end of the um of the funny part of it. Um. C words. Give me your. F- oh yeah, just phonetically, give- phonetically words that are that have C's, K's, those type type of sounds. So you just you do subscribe to that sort of widely acknowledged comedy theory, at least. Whoa, Mark, you're making it seem like it's not a a, a unique thought I had, you know. But I mean, it's <laughs> it's an important element of the in the recipe of comedy. You know, you yeah. need to do those. Comedy well, itself is the word. Yep, it's has the C. a C, right? Yeah, but like. In little things, like I'll listen to some Dennis Miller, and everybody hates Dennis Miller, but he's very good at his j- word selection. Mm. And he has, every wor- word he has is a funny sounding word. 
if you listen to him. And he's got some bit, it's like about the brakes on the train. You know, he doesn't like how yeah. people can pull the brake. Yeah. And then his punchline is like, I don't want to derail it to, I don't want to find out we derailed at 200 miles an hour because, you know, little Dougie thought he saw a woodchuck. <laughs> and it's so funny to end on that, right? Yeah, yeah. Woodchuck. That's a funny way to end. And I did it when I had my web series, Nothing's Easy on Comedy Central. Check it out online on all your uh, preferred streaming. It'll be linked. We had a scene in a library, and this guy, um, Dean, uh, fuck, I'm blanking on his name, but the guy I'm doing this scene with, um, he had a line where he's like, all the, all the, I forget what it was, like, all the clubs have been converted into condos and cupcake shops. Like, that was the line. <laughs> And it was just, you know, I did the script. I wrote the script, but I put the line in there. And then for him, every time, every take he did saying that back to me, I broke up. I couldn't do the thing because that line was, those sounds were so funny. It wasn't that it was a funny anything. Yeah. Just listening to him saying like, all the all the clubs have been converted into cup condos and cupcake shops. <laughs> it's like a funny like yeah. thing. And he like just, hit, it's like a very like choppy sound that made me laugh i don't know why it was also his delivery was really funny i didn't really hear it that way until he delivered it yeah huh because uh, yeah i i think um to the readers out there uninitiated in the ways of comedy which is <laughs> the three people i've browbeaten into listening to this maybe um <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> it, it is kind of a i was just surprised to hear it from the iconoclast that is david angelo that, to no. fall in line on, on one. There are certain rules, you know. It's like the yeah. laws of physics. Yep. Well, <clears throat> there, there's, a, there's a certain C word that British people are very comfortable with, and an, it's anathema to Americans, right? So we don't, need oh, to, yeah. we don't need to speak that word. I think we all know what it is. <laughs> it's the elephant in the room. Um, so what's your position on the C word that dare not speak his name? Would, oh, would Mark, you, you trying to get me canceled here on your on your yeah, I, yeah. one of the one of your three listeners gonna report <laughs> yeah, me? Yeah, I mean, are you no. pro or anti it? Because it's it's kind of a di diversive c word. It's a c word. You know, I don't use it in the act. I don't. I would never yeah. use it. Obviously, I I don't use it in TV. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess around my house, I will call objects that. Yeah. <laughs> Occasion, like if you know what I mean, like if you bump your knee on a table, then yeah. I'll call it that, huh? Because it's it's a good hard word, you know. It's like yeah. <laughs> it goes, it pairs well with fucking. Can you say fucking? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I'm trying to actually. My whole life, my dad said to me, "Don't swear." because that's how they know you're working class. And of course, I didn't understand it, right? I'm just this gobby little twat, like, oh, it's, don't, be, don't bring me down with your rules, man. And it wasn't right. until late middle age, I was like, no, that is truly the first way you can be profiled. Is, is, oh, yeah. It, it, well, intellectually anyway. Obviously, when you walk down the street, the clothes that you wear profile you. But don't swear. And now I find myself telling comedians, it's, what I'd say is I, I tell the host of a show, don't swear up top. A, people are profiling you. Okay, what level of... of intellectualism i going to get out of this show and b swearing is an act of aggression right it's not an act of contrition it's an act of aggression and you shouldn't do it now i say comedians in the middle of the show can swear their heads off right because a relationship is now established but top of the show don't swear guys because it, it's an act of aggression and it is contrary to establishing a rapport what do you think well, I don't know if it's an act of, reg of aggression in, in all cases, right? Like you can be, the only times I think I swear in my act is when I am doing like act outs or something. Yeah. And then it's fine. Nobody's, nobody gets uptight. Huh. Um, I think it's only weird if you like directed at someone or if you, um, 
Yeah, I mean, also, you do sound low class. Like, I noticed that, like, <clears throat> um, I, when I was in college, if I was in college and I was with all my, like, fancy college friends, and then I would go home or something, and then I'm back in my hometown, which wasn't, like, working class necessarily, but, like, you know, it wasn't, not everybody was, you know, debating, uh, yeah. you know, Nietzsche. <laughs> you know, it wasn't... <laughs> But then people, when people would swear just casually in conversation, it was like, whoa, I forgot people did all this. Yeah. Huh. So that's true. Yeah. You know, you make yourself seem a little more yeah. refined if you don't do it. Aren't we middle-aged? <laughs> well, that's just true. <laughs> yeah. Took me a long time to suss that one out. All right, so let's let's uh, let's park it for a second and listen to me talk. Yay! Uh, let's talk science. So I, I, every episode features a proper little bit of science, and specifically to annoy David, I've chosen the University of Alberta, uh, communist Canada. I, that's where I got my masters, actually. <laughs> really? No. No. Okay. Okay. I, I didn't kind of <laughs> Okay, so psychologist Dr. Chris Westbury, the University of Alberta, did a study on why certain words are considered funny. One of the conclusions, and I'm reading this off paper, one of the conclusions of the study is that there are two ways to predict whether a word will be funny or not. It's meaning and it's form. Semantic predictors depend on the meaning of the words and the emotions evoked by the words. This measures how closely a word is, either in meaning or emotion, to the particular category it represents. The study found there were six categories of words that make us laugh. Sex, obviously. Bodily functions, slam dunk. Insults, swear words, partying and animals which are those how those two creep on the end i do not know the the first four i get partying and animals separately i'm presuming here so animals yeah i don't know animals. yeah yeah i get partying but i don't get animals so so this is like specific words so sex category we won't even bother with bodily functions we all know the words um Funny partying related words are booze and shindig. Do we find booze and shindig funny? Uh n I, I mean when was this written? Uh I don't know. You'll have to click the link. Oh, December 2018. Well, I mean again, it's like these are phonetic funny or are they like Yeah. I think that's because what the, that's what the implication is. It's the phonetics of it. A part. I, of the I deal. would say booze is not as funny as hooch. Yeah. Hooch is funnier. Yeah. You know, and then what's the other one? Shindig. Shindig. I mean, I think that's just more of that like that's like a um, retro throwback yeah. reference kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when people are like, oh, we're doing an ice cream social, like like it's being cute. <laughs> Yeah, okay. It's not really like, oh, yeah, that's hilarious on its own. <laughs> All right, well, Dr. Westbury's second predictor of funny words he calls information predictors. These have to do with the structure of a word or its form. Words with fewer letters that occur less frequently were found to be funnier than more than words that are with more common letters. Similarly, less common words are funnier than common ones. So, the K, he, uh, Dr. Westbury goes to the K, K sound, similar to the C, obviously. Funny words like puke, think, and oink. And letters. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I don't think the words are funny, but the sounds is the same thing I've been saying. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, yeah, like the 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 more unusual letters are are K Q. Yeah. Um, those are the ones, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we agree with the science at least. So let's talk influence now. So 
you're obviously uh, a comedy legend slash taste maker, as we alluded to at top there. Um, very true, very true. Very true. Um, how do you parlay what you find funny into what you do? I mean, it's pretty much a straight line, right? I don't understand what you're asking. So you, you find these things funny. How do you then employ them in the tools of your job? Like, do you go? Well, I mean, do you do you they, deliberately write sketches with people in barrels in them, for instance? No, I've never done it. That's just how I. I mean, I can't do anything with that one. I think it's funny, but I can't do anything with it. Like the the C K sounds, I could probably just you know keep an eye on them. Yeah, yeah. And then if I have options, usually you can choose words on how to end, and you know you you sit down and you decide what word is funnier, which yeah. I did recently. I forget what I was doing, but um. I sat down and I had to like come up with a list of words that I thought were in like a funny order. But anyway, you know, then you just kind of go to the ones that have those sounds. Yeah. It's kind of straightforward. I don't know. I mean, you just filter it out. It's kind of natural. Huh. But would you say you're, when you write, you're writing for what you find funny or what you know other people find funny? Because I think there's a balance. Um, a little bit, but I, I do stuff that I, I would never do things that, like if I'm writing for a TV, I wouldn't do something that I know they won't find funny. Yeah. Like maybe I think something's funny, but I know they're not going to find it funny. Then I'm not going to do it just because like, what's the point? Yeah. But um, there's still like a, a big spectrum in between there, between just totally pandering. So then you go to the next thing where it's like, okay, I think this is funny and I think they will find it funny. You just kind of zone in, you know, see where the the intersection is. Because you have to do both. You can't be totally alienating everybody, which is this vibe of a lot of young comics, me included at the time, you know, when I was yeah. starting out, like, ah, who cares what the audience thinks? It's like, well, <laughs> you know, I think it is kind of, <laughs> has some bearing on the process, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so we're we're getting towards the wrap up here. Um, so I sent you a bunch of links, which uh, the 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 listeners can catch up with at you think that's funny podcast dot com. Um, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna spit I'm gonna do the description, and you can you can one word answer or or a little background. It's up to you. So the fir okay. the first link was the uh a personal favorite of mine. The Mary White House Experience did a sketch called History Today, which is essentially two fuddy duddy old men who are meant to be discussing history and descend into childish insults. Funny or not funny? I'll tell you Mark honestly, it's for me it's not funny, but it's another example of British stuff. Yeah. It's funny for you cuz you have the reference of that. In my li it's only funny because you know the idea of like two British intellectuals talking to each other. Yeah. You know, in some kind of weird uh, you know. I, I was worried uh, that one would be a dud cuz I think the, the the way they say like that's you that is that's what English school kids you, like you would point to a a dog turn and go that's you that is. And I was like I don't think Americans would ever do that. Right, but even the the setup of like it's funny because it's our two British intellectuals yeah. descending. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I mean we don't have that. You know, you have you went to your little boarding school with <laughs> No I did. Where you all had your outfits and <laughs> you know, you you sang songs to the Queen. Or a lot of homoerotic energy in the in the dormitories. I mean we didn't have that, you know. We didn't have that. You were but, all hacked. And when you have the reference point, then the then the sketch is funny. <laughs> yeah. You in America you were all hanging around the soda fountain talking about Joe Namath. Am I right, people? That's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sitting on the trunk of a Mustang, you know. <laughs> all right, second clip. The second clip. Oh, it's another favorite of mine. You got to have liked this one. It's an Alas Smith and Jones sketch where they they interview participants of the Spanish Civil War. Uh, you got to go to the links. I thought this one, historical this jokes. One, he's gonna this like one this. Is, 
so much this was the worst one you sent oh come on <laughs> this was the worst one because this is like a two this is a smarty pants bit you this like... is another one where you it's funny if you're someone who's watching a lot of S spanish war whatever it is <laughs> Come on. I mean, Come on. I, I was like, do I need, I need to take like college credit to understand what's going on with this, this sketch. I always thought the comedy apocalypse would end with just me and you sitting on a hill, looking down on everyone else going, my God, these people are dumb. Well, Mark, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm willing to look down, but I need it. You need to lower the bar. Cause I can't, that one's too high up for me. You know, that one's too, when something's too arrogant for me, then I got to then I then I've uh, jumped the shark. Yeah, that's too far. So I'm willing to, you know, I oh. look down on anything, but like it's got to be below me. All right, all right. Well, I I almost think these are all dead in the water now. Uh, third one, Harry Enfield. It's a parody of these old like 1930s, 1940s information newsreel. You remember when people used to tell the working class like this is the news and this is how you should feel about it that was a big thing yeah. like i think there was an american equivalent right yeah well this one was funny so okay. people watch this you know you give your listeners a lot of work they got to go watch these videos they got to do hey i'm raising play the, bar. the video i'm raising the bar not pandering david you should this one's a short <laughs> one you you should play it Put it in the thing. Play the play this one in the podcast. I can't. You can we'll, do it. We'll get reject. We'll get shut down, won't we? Because of copyright. You just play the piano underneath it. <laughs> Sit down to your old, you know, console piano, Mark. Play yeah. some. Play the old "God Save the Queen" or whatever you know. So you did like this one, though. This one was funny. Okay. So this one was about like explaining to women how to act. <laughs> in a newsreel format it was funny yeah okay well you can say you can get the links at you think that's funny podcast.com boom they're there i've done the work for you listeners okay the final one i really did think this was one you would probably like it's alexi sale and he has a character called bobby chariots who's a warm-up comedian at a comedy show so quick quick industry chat here people Live recordings, they have very often have a comedian standing in the wings to warm up the crowd and do do warm up work. Um, yeah, and people know a warm up guy. They know Mark. What are you? Talking about? I don't know. I don't know. Not how can you be? How can you be this arrogant? And also, <laughs> I mean, you, you. They know this stuff. You have to at least expect they know what a warm up comic is. Okay. So what? Well, anyway, what did you think of Bobby Chariot? This one was funny. This one was funny. Yeah. Because he's but a also, loser. He's the biggest loser in the room. He's a he's a huge loser. He also had funny jokes. He had a joke that was funny where he said, um, <laughs> "You ever sit? You ever in a diner or something, and you see the sign that says thank you for not smoking, but you're thinking, but I am smoking.' <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a funny joke. That's like a super funny joke. I would tell. I would happily take that joke if someone <laughs> if, if it was uh, for sale and I could do it in my act. That's a funny joke. All right. Well, I was two for four on that, um, which it, uh, it's, I'm mildly disappointed with, but I think I, I turned it around in the end there. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's some British, you're some of your British stuff, like people like us, the yeah. documentary series. Yeah, yeah. That's very funny. I think it's funny. Yeah. But these ones, they were too British and too high society. You know, okay. I didn't go to Eton, Mark. I didn't, I don't know the, <laughs> I don't know which of the, th if you put five different forks in front of me, I can't identify them like, you know, you and uh, no, you I, and your classmates at the, uh, you know, I already the Duke of Coventry. <laughs> I've already told you I put, I've betrayed my working class roots one too many times. Um, all right. So let's, let's wrap this thing up then because we've blown the light if I can introduce more industry speak here. What is the funny thing? What is the thing that everyone else is laughing at? Everyone else thinks funny. And David Angelo is just like, I, I don't get it. And I, I, I realize we could fill an hour with this. So give me the, give me the most annoying one to you. Honestly, I don't know that any of them annoy me. The one, the one that I can think of that most people know about yeah. is and i'm not i'm not saying it's not funny it's just a thing i never got is right. tim and eric tim and eric <laughs> i could sit down i have no idea 
why everybody laughs at it. Oh, I have no man. idea. And it's not like I, I don't th- I don't think it's like beneath me. I don't think it's not funny. I just don't understand it. But like yeah. everybody seems to love it. I have no idea what's going on. I've, n- I've never been able to sit and watch any of that and think like this is I don't I think it's over. they put it like over my head. I don't understand. I feel like I'm losing the joke on that. Oh my god! It keeps coming up. It keeps coming. Tim, I'm just going to change this podcast to the "You Don't Think Tim and Eric's Funny" podcast. Is that what other people yeah, say? I, it's it's. Th- I mean, I, I was telling my producer Christine, um, we got to find some young people because <laughs> it's just like it, I, I've interviewed exclusively people in my you know social strata up to now, and we're all just scratching our heads, going, "Tim and Eric, what the." Uh, so I, I got to find someone who actually. Oh, I know who someone who 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 will like it because he interned. You know the guy. I know someone who interned on Tim and Eric. So I, I, it's my next interview. I mean, I know a lot of people who like it. I mean, I was like the audience for it, you know yeah, when yeah. it came out. I was like twenty years old or whatever. But like, yeah. I didn't. I just felt like it was being. I was. I. I kept thinking it was over my head or something. Yeah. I could never understand it. And then I'd sit and watch it. People would always be like, "Watch this! It's so funny!" And they'd be cracking up. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. All right. Did you ever watch Wonder Shows? And no. Okay. Well, we'll park it there then. All right. That's been this week's show. That was a nice, abrupt, clean jump cut, as you say in the TV industry, right? Did I get it right? No. That's not a jump cut. It's a, uh, you, maybe a smash cut, you'd say. Okay, a smash cut, smash cut. All right, we're smash cutting out of here. So what's, um, <laughs> what's David Angelo got on the burner apart from uh, spaghetti sauce right now? <laughs> wow, is that an ethnic thing, Mark? No. So we're really just, getting, into the, uh, we're getting into the stereotypes yeah. here. Um, well, on Wednesday, when does this air? Do you put this out immediately? Uh, no, it'll probably sit on a hard drive till about 2026, if I have my way. No, it's, uh, I, producer Christine is like exceptional at getting this stuff banged out. We've just racked a few up just so I've got a buffer if I don't feel like recording, you know, any given time. Let's call it the All remainder right. of 2021. <laughs> Okay, well, my thing is this Wednesday, (laughs) (laughs) um, I have a show. I I did an episode of The Daily Show where I, I, I like, wrote the episode. And it's kind of a special. Ah. And it's coming out on Wednesday. All right. But I can link back to it if we come in late anyway, right? All that stuff. Yeah, so if you're, if you, if this airs after that. Yeah. I can't get into... They haven't done the press release. It's on Monday they talk about it. Yeah. So I don't want to get into details, but this Wednesday's episode of The Daily Show... Okay. I I was the... Uh, I was very instrumental in that one. Awesome. All righty. Well, um, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you very much, David, for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mark. Always a pleasure to hear about your, uh, you know, your old university days <laughs> and... See all the <laughs> see all the material you and the lads would pass around, you know, <laughs> while the headmaster wasn't looking. <laughs> you know, uh, those making fun of the Tories and whatnot. It's just yeah. important, you know. The, Down with Thatcher. We'll be our our rallying call forever. All right, that has been You Think That's Funny, a podcast about what people think is funny. I have now once again forgotten how we wrap this thing up. Let's go to the inevitable jangly guitar music. Thank you very much. Bye.